What's up, everybody? Where's the camera? What's up, everybody? My name is Dallas Sunias, and let's talk about me. <laughs> Why? Because I'm the future, baby. Over the course of this video, I hope to explain why that is an incredibly false statement. Let me open with saying I'm proud of you, and I'll get to that later as well. Word. Here we go. Yes, yeah, so as I said, my name is Dallas Sunias. My people come from Neo Xingniguming in Ontario, and that's my mom's side. The dad's side comes from Red Pheasant uh, First Nation in Saskatchewan, so he's Cree, mom's Ojibwe. I am a mash, a mishmash of this, making me basically a superhero. So currently I'm the head coach of the men's volleyball team at the, the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology, uh, which is a college in Calgary. I do some speaking when people ask me to do it. Uh, I do a little acting here and there. Um, but what I used to do, the reason I'm talking to you now, most likely, is because I was a member of the national volleyball team for uh, 13 years. And I was actually the first indigenous male to play on that team, as far as I know, as far as anybody's told me. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit of how I got there. Uh, I wish I could tell you that I had the hardest route ever and I overcame so many hard things. Uh, but that's not, there's people who had harder times getting to success than I did. But it also wasn't all peaches and gravy. So somewhere in the middle. So I'm gonna talk about how I got from there to there, loosely, because we only have so much time. So my parents chose to raise my brother and I in Red Deer, Alberta. If you find Red Deer, Alberta on a map, you'll notice it is not on Crown land. We grew up in a city. We didn't grow up on, uh, on res land. So right there, you could argue that I had more opportunity than someone living in, say, Shefferville, Quebec, shouts to them. Those places are very isolated. Populations are smaller than in a city. But there's also negatives that come with that. For example, it felt as though my brother Serene and I were the only indigenous guys in the whole town, which clearly wasn't true, but it kind of felt like that. So we had the opportunity to play a lot of sports. My, my mother made sure we played everything we possibly could. So that's the positive. But on the negative side, we didn't have a community with us that was always had our backs and saw the world the same way as we were brought up to see it with our indigenous parents. The point is, if you look at it in some sort of high analytics, I'm sure there's an algorithm, you can work out how difficult it was for Serene and I to just function in Red Deer versus the opportunity we had growing up there. And I'm sure there's some sort of scale that says it kind of washed out. The point is, initially it wasn't even our choice. My mother put us in every sport she possibly could and we took advantage of every opportunity we had. So that means if in your home community, you can play two or three sports, you do those two or three sports as much as you can. The, the statistics show that athletes who play lots and lots of sports up until the point they decide to specialize at, I don't know, 17 or 18, the athletes who do more sports are going to be way far and above better in the long run than athletes who only try to do one sport. Analytics aside, I discovered volleyball in the eighth grade and was promptly cut from my first team because I wasn't really ready to be on a team, I suppose. That's saying it lightly. I was probably pretty awful to my teammates at that point. I had a pretty bad attitude. Luckily, the next year I tried again and the coach kept me. Shouts to him. Shouts to Mr. Wesley. And from there, because I'd never played the game, I'd played so many games, but I'd never really bit into volleyball, my learning curve was really high because I was so bad to start with. So bad, in fact, that the first time I tried to hit a volleyball, I completely missed the ball. It was thoroughly embarrassing and probably good for me in the long run because the next time I tried to hit a volleyball, it worked. I hit it and then I got a little better and a little better and oof. It, it, it felt like uh, my skills took off and, and that was awesome. After my high school season, 
I found out there was club volleyball in my town and my friends were all playing, so I was I tried out and made that team. After that, in the summer, there was a provincial volleyball team. So luckily I, I, I made the I was like the thirteenth guy on that team of twelve. And after that point I pretty much played twelve months a year. For like holy jeepers. For like eighteen years straight. It's no wonder I retired with my body all busted. Sidebar, something about volleyball is if you're on the national team, you're a 12-month athlete. There's no time off like the NBA or, or, or in the NHL. You're just going and going and going and destroying yourself. Being a professional athlete is not good for you. What was I talking about? Right, so when I made that first provincial team when I was 15 years old, that felt, that had the same effect on me as when I made the national team. It was the same level of elation, even though there's hundreds of, hundreds and hundreds of athletes that have played on a provincial team when, when they're 15 versus internationally at a very high level of like the senior national team. But it was the same feeling inside. And I'll try to explain why. So growing up in Red, you're surrounded by people who don't have the same background as you i.e. non-indigenous people. The mentality is just a little bit different in their way of life and the, their overall confidence in their ability to do things. This is a proven generational issue um, for young indigenous people. When you think about it, my parents went to, my, my, my father went to residential school. My mother was part of the 60s sweep. Um, there's so much to unload with those two issues, but the takeaway for what I'm talking about is Say your great-grandparents went to residential school. They were taught that their culture was bad, that they were bad, that their ancestors were bad. And then maybe their kids went to residential school and those things were reinforced, so it was doubled down on. And then maybe your parents didn't go to residential school and you don't go to residential school. But everything that was learned two, two generations ago about what bad people you are, what a terrible culture you had, those things seep in because maybe those older generations forgot how to, how, forgot how the culture raised kids and forgot how to teach their kids or, or were told it was bad to teach their kids about their, their culture. And all this comes into, all this boils down into a, a child's confidence in themselves generations later, among a whole bunch of other things. So even though I had the potential and I had the physical ability that was very clear to everybody else, I thought I really had no, no real chance of making that provincial team. So when I did, it was, it was a pretty ridiculous, I didn't believe, I didn't believe the coach when he told me that I, I made the squad and he likes to tell that story and it's a funny story, but it's, it's so, when you break it down, it's so much bigger than just a funny story as to why I, I, I didn't believe him. So I took a big risk trying out for that team and then making that team and staying with that team because I wanted to quit that team right from the first day. It was way too much for me, but I'm glad I stuck with it because eventually, remember, I, I, I went from there to here. Dallas showing his international level here. It's a full double block, able to go so sharp cross court from the back row. He's taking off 10 feet from the net there and still burying it. And that, and that was pretty cool. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is bet on yourself. Take chances. If you only stay in a comfortable situation, you're only going to stay in a comfortable situation, if that makes sense. Let me rephrase that. If you only stay where you are and what you know, that's, that's where you're gonna stay. You have to take chances on yourself, even if you don't think you got what it takes. More often than not, you do. My father and both my parents' parents and their parents' parents who went to residential school were taught that their ancestors were bad people and godless heathens and savages and they're all in hell now. Come on. I promise you they were just doing the best every generation to 
give the most opportunity for their kids like you guys are going to do for your kids. Now the thing is, I'm in the same boat as you in the sense that my parents and my grandparents, my great grandparents and all my ancestors going back, same as you, were survivors. Making you a survivor. So again, have confidence in yourself. Understand that you come from a super, super long list of strong survivor people and bet on yourself. Take chances. So one of the first things I said is that I am proud of you and you're probably like, I don't know this guy, man. He don't know me. I kind of do. I'm very proud of you because you are here. You're looking at this video. You're trying to better yourself. You're taking a little step in the right direction. And we all know people your age, my age, who aren't trying to do that. Bang, it's easy. I'm proud of you. So keep learning. Keep trying to better yourself in whatever it is you want to do. And if you're ever worried or concerned about something, there's people that can help. Reach out to me if you can find me somewhere. Ask your teachers. And then if nobody's around, think about your ancestors and how they were in fact really strong people. Again, my name's Dallas. Much love, be good, treat each other good. All right, I'm out.